Hello, good evening, and welcome to the all-new season of Agenda. My name is Matilda Asante Esiedu. Thank you very much for making time to join us tonight. Now, on this maiden edition of Agenda, we're looking at a subject that is of great interest to every Ghanaian. I'm talking about the IMA bailout. What exactly is it that our officials in government are looking for? What could be the possible implications for the Ghanaian economy? What about your business or your personal lifestyle? That's what we're looking at tonight. As officials prepare to start negotiations with the IMF, we want to examine exactly what Ghana is looking for. Is it a bailout or a program? Well, I don't have the answers, but we have an array of experts to help us address these questions. And I'm going to be introducing them to you in a moment. Uh, to my far left, we've got um, Mr. Kenneth Thompson. He is the chief executive of Delex Finance Accra. He doesn't think that uh, an IMF program is a magic wand that would turn things around. We'll hear his perspectives uh, tonight. Also in the studios with us tonight, we've got Professor Peter Korte. He's head of economics department at the University of Ghana and a senior lecturer at ESA. Okay. Also with us tonight, Mr. Kwabna Bwedi Okun Afari, Chief Economics Officer and Director for Real Sector from the Ministry of Finance. Uh, later on in the program, we'll be joined by a professor from the Yale University by Skype. His name is uh, Vikram Mansharamani, and he also lectures in ethics, political science, and economics. He's been following the Ghanaian situation a lot, and he's got a lot to say about whether or not going to IMF is the feasible thing to do. And we'd like to welcome you gentlemen to Agenda. Thank you for making time to join us. And Vikram, uh, thank you very much for making time. I know you're very busy as our guest there, but you made time. We appreciate that. Now, Agenda is brought to you uh, by Nokia, Lumia, and also by Malcolm. Let's acknowledge our sponsors, and then we'll get to talk about the subject. We'd also like to hear from you, uh, viewers. So send us uh, your comments, your questions, and your contributions via our short code 1734. Now, as I mentioned, Agenda is brought to you in association uh, with Malcolm and Nokia Lumia. And Malcolm is celebrating his 25th anniversary. And for that, they are giving you over 15,000 products in their shops at a whooping discount of 80%. The offer is valid while stocks last. Terms and conditions apply. So rush now and get whatever you need. Household items from Malcolm. Malcolm Wear Ghana Shops. Let's also acknowledge uh, our other sponsor, Nokia Lumia 930. Get the new Nokia Lumia 930 and stay close to the things that matter to you most. The Lumia 930 comes with a 20 megapixel pure view camera so you can capture high quality pictures and videos that are more true to life than ever before it comes with a five bright inch full hd screen that gives you astonishing readability even under the sun you also get to stay up to speed with what's happening in your world with exclusive live tiles and the action center right on the home screen of your lumia 930 the nokia lumia 930 is here just make sure you get yours and enjoy uh, the benefits now let's look at uh, our subject uh, for tonight uh, before we do that though we'd like to put the discussion in perspective. Government officials have been speaking about why they need to go to the IMF. Let's listen to Mona Korte. She's a deputy minister. After this instruction from the president, basically a formal request goes to the development partners, and well, basically to IMF, about engaging in discussions. So at that point, um, you, you've just sent... A request out you haven't yet met you haven't discussed and we wouldn't want to preempt what will be said on one side or the other side we know what we are looking for and as I said it's to to have to brainstorm ideas on how to move our homegrown policy forward it's not necessarily for money or for any conditions per se what 
has really brought us to this point is those um, conditions that are out of our control. One, the price of cocoa, and two, the price of gold. These two have affected our revenue where we don't have any control. So all the capital expenditure that we intended to make, we couldn't do it because we didn't have enough revenue. So that assumption has changed. And therefore, it, it necessitates having a chat with development partners or with the IMF. The West African Gas Pipeline has disappointed us, as you know. So the assumptions that underpinned our homegrown policy, which is a good policy, have changed, and they've changed negatively. However, they will, they will improve, but the question is when. So in the interim, let's engage the IMF again and discuss some of these assumptions that have changed. The areas that they can help us out with are on best practice basis. They, they could also help us on technical assistance, looking at our program and perhaps reprioritizing parts of it. You're looking at a timeline of uh, the homegrown. You're not too sure what time it may uh, work out. That's why you want to open the discussions now. Your critics have indicated that you have failed in terms of the homegrown policies. First of all, there's no discussion about failure in this case. I just said that the homegrown policy is going to be the discussion document with the IMF and the development partners. So it, f failure is not in this subject at all. This is the document that will continue to be the base document for going forward. It has not failed. It has actually done well. We've seen some results, but perhaps we want to see the results quicker and with some more magnitude. And that's how come we are going to be brainstorming with people who know how to do it a little bit better than perhaps we can. It is, it's, it's not a matter of failure or shame to go to people who you must go to. The IMF is a lender of, of last resort. We are also members of the IMF. So we, we are allowed, we are permitted to at any point in time go to them to have this discussion. And that was uh, the Deputy Minister for Finance, Amona Korte, in that uh, interview. Uh, let's start with Mr. Oko Afari. <laughs> now, Ghana, a few years ago, was touted as uh, one of the fastest growing economies, doing so well, everybody was praising the country. How come that suddenly we're having to run to the IMF? And what is it we're looking for, by the way? Is it a bailout or a program? Yeah, okay, thank you. Um very much for this uh, interesting topic. Um, let me say that Ghana is still growing very fast. In terms of growth, Ghana is doing very well um, at a rate of more than 7%. Um, it's um, above the um, average, the world average, the, even the African average that we're looking at. So there is, it's a different thing uh, altogether. Ghana is still growing very fast. The issues that maybe you are looking at are the other macro indicators, like the fiscal deficit and so on. So um, uh, that is the correction that I would want to, to, to make. So we're and growing fast. We are growing. and um, Shouldn't that reflect in our lives? I mean, should we be seeking a bailout if we're doing as well as you say we are? Well, growth in itself um, has its own, um, the other sides of it, because there are what we call policy tensions. Um, as you try to uh, implement some policies on one side, you have other policies that you must give, and something has to give. If you want to increase growth, it means that you are increasing your expenditure. Very well. And um, when that happens, you are definitely going to heat up the economy. Uh, in terms of inflation will go up. Your fiscal deficit will go up. So these are policy tensions that have to be well balanced. And if you don't balance them well, then you have some parts of the macro, um, macro um, components uh, going very bad, and that is exactly what we are, we are facing now. Uh, Prof, I, I'd like you to come in here. He says we're growing, and yet uh, we still have to seek IMF intervention. Why should that be? Um, 